Well, Kenny, the first first three years here, you've kind of been at the bottom rung, I guess, of the running back state. But every year, you kind of made that next climb, and now here you are up at the top. Just kind of describe what that journey has been like for you to right now. I mean, I've been like that my whole life, kind of like the underdog, if you kind of want to say it like that. Um, so I've really been preparing for this moment just to come. So just for me to be here in this moment, thank God for me to, you know, finally be here to get the opportunity to go out there and, you know, showcase my talent. And, and now it's here, so I'm ready. I can't, you know, I can't complain. Coach Mark talked about your maturity. Mm -hmm. I guess is the, the biggest difference, if you want to call it that. What's he talking about right there when he talks about your maturity? You know, I've just been through a lot. Like I said, um, watching older guys that's been here, you know, you know, they've been having a big role, and now that it's my turn, I know how the role looks, I know how it's supposed to look. So just, you know, growing up and watching the older guys, kind of like my brothers, watching my brothers and just watching how they went through things, went about things. So, um, you know, I kind of went and say, I ain't have it, I liked it. I kind of always been there. So just, you know, kind of showing a lot more out there on the field, being vocal, more vocal. And, you know, I've always been a leader by my actions and stuff like that. So just me being more vocalized, I think that's what he's doing. I know Samir and James are busy doing their own thing right now. Have you had a chance to talk with them? Have they spoken to you at all about I mean, yeah, we, you know, it's, like I said, it's a brotherhood just so, you know, just because they went to the next level don't mean anything. We always, you know, contact each other, talk about things. Off Football-wise or life-wise, stuff like that. So, yeah, we always talk. You guys are playing for so much as, a, as, as players. I mean, you know, you're trying to make a, a, a living to go with a living at what you're doing, and, and you know, NIL's here, and you're trying to do things that way too. Uh, Georgia being known as RBU, does does, does that manifest itself within you guys at all? That like there's a tradition here that I have to help uphold a legacy here. Not, not, I wouldn't say a tradition, you know what I'm saying? It's more like a standard. Here we got a standard, you know, just the young guys when they come here and they abide by the standard, you know, it makes you want to, you know, they see the older guys did it they, when they left and stuff like that. So just the standard makes them, you know, want to come out here and compete and get better and stuff like that. That's all it is. Just the standard Georgia Bull by a pond. Young guys and players and stuff like that. So. Just wonder when, when Andrew went down, did it kind of create a circle lag of mentality in the running back room? Say that again. I said when Andrew Paul went down with his ACL injury, did, did it cause the rest of you guys to kind of circle the wagon, so to speak? To, you know? I mean, no, nah, just, just because one went down, um, we have injuries almost every year, something like that. You know, just like we have a, a tremendous running back room, you know what I'm saying? We got a lot of backs, you know what I'm saying? So just because one went down, uh, you know, we just know we got to tighten up, you know, make up for his loss and you know, hope he get better and stuff like that. But it's just time for the, the young guys to break it down even more. So that's all that is. How long have you been telling Andrew during his recovery process to get back on track? Because obviously that's a tough way to start to do it. It definitely is. But like uh, like I said, we had a lot of injuries. I believe Zemir had two, I believe. So, you know, a lot of running backs have been through that. He's going to be well. So telling him that keep his head. Keep his head up and stuff like that. Tell him, give him motivation and stuff like that. He's gonna get through this. He's gonna be fine. How uh, how determined are you? Uh, excited are you about kind of you know showing off, showing off this offense that you've got been working on for a whole year that you're a big part of. Steps a big part of these tight ends, these receivers. How eager y'all to finally kind of show people what you've been working on? I mean, since last year, I kind of say I've been eager to get on the field a little more and stuff like that. But now that it's here. I feel like it's, it's, it's time. God's planning and God's timing. I can't rush his timing. I think his timing is perfect. So um, now that it's here, we're just ready to go out there and showcase the world and stuff like that. So, um, like I said, I just thank God for his timing. What was your mentality coming into camp with Andrew and Andrew Paul and Andrew Paul? Just being that leader, playing that role, being the older guy in the room. Uh, me and Kendall had this conversation. Uh, a few times, like, you remember being the young guys in the room and stuff like that, and just wanting to be in this position. So, now that it's here, like I said, uh, there's no holding back now. It's, you know, the foot on the gas, it's time to go. So, that's like that's kind of been our memo just to go out there and give it our all each and every day, lead by example for the young guys so they can, they know what how to, when we leave, they know how to set the example for the other ones that come along. It's a tradition, you know what I'm saying? So, like, just being able to be in this role right now, just, I just thank God. So, can you think you're better when uh, Kendall is healthy and can be kind of a one-two punch, or can you handle a big workload if, if he's not available on certain weeks or whatever? I feel like we have a great running back room, so even with Kendall being hurt and stuff like that, um, which he's, he, he's been working on getting healthy.
healthy and stuff like that. He's more healthy now, actually. So just with him being down, like I said, the young guys just got to book it down even more. And as for me, I don't really have to take that though. Like I said, we have a lot of running backs and stuff like that. So uh, if Kenner go down, I go down. We got another one coming in. So it's really RBU. <laughs> What's been the biggest focus of the running back room this fall? The biggest focus? Uh, just to, like I say, go out there and give it our all. It's not really a focus. I feel like we have, we know the plan, we know what we have to do, we know how to go and execute it. Just really being a focus dialed into the offense and, you know, Georgia and the plan. And that's really the focus, just to buy into the plan of the whole offense and just to go out there and showcase our time. What have you seen from the game to the first game of the season? What do you do to try to kind of ease the nerves going into a big game at the Mercedes Benz Stadium? How do you guys get locked in um, when you're this close to the first game of the season? You guys, I mean, the whole team or just me? Just like, you and the team? I feel like, like I said, I've been waiting for this moment. It's, I feel like I played in a lot of big games already. So, you know, I, I know I wasn't like the lead back going out there like Zamir, but not being behind Zamir and the Cubs. I still went out there and played and did what I had to do, so I've been waiting on this moment my whole life. Um, like I said, I, in high school, I never had, like, uh, playing in front of thousands of fans and stuff like that. And I've been had the opportunity three years uh, since a freshman, so the nerves been gone. So for me, I feel like I'm ready. What have you learned about these? Uh, you're patient, fought hard for this lead back spot. Now that you're finally here, what do you expect from yourself this season on and off? Just for me to go out there and prove to myself that I'm capable of being complete bat, one of the best bats. Um, just going out there and you know, giving God pray, his praise for me being, and be, like, being him, for me to be able to be here. So. I was just going to ask you what you've seen from the uh, Oregon defense and the run defense and those inside linebackers. You're in. you asking about the linebackers? Yeah. Um, linebackers they got a lot of talented guys over there. The linebackers are real talented. They know how to blitz well, cover well, and stuff like that. So I feel like we got to be real dialed into the plan, like I said, and going out there and executing it for us to be successful. That's what we're going to have to do. So. Okay. Okay, did you have uh, your own branded T-shirt I saw you came out of the elevator on? <laughs> yes, I did. Um, is that on a website? Are you, are you doing that in IELTS? It's, it's on the website. Not, um, it actually just came out not too long ago, I think it was last week. So I just got um, my family situated with all of that and stuff like that. Now I'm waiting on you know, more to come. We, to spread around my teammates. My teammates been asking for a lot of it, so you know, <laughs> I'm waiting on to get them settled in, and right? Looking what, good. What does it say? I didn't catch that. I just saw the six. What, what's the? It's a Kenny McIntosh blueprint. That blueprint. Uh, blueprint. Kenny, what have you seen from Branson as he gets ready for his first? Branson, he, he he's, he's developing. He's a young bat, like I said. He's getting right. Um, I believe he's in a great, great staff to you know develop to be the complete bat. You know, being here at Georgia, like I said, is RBU. So. I feel like he made a great decision to come in here. So just him being here and watching the older guys and, and just, just following our footsteps, I see that like he's going to be he's gonna be pretty good in the um, upcoming years. What, Kenny, what uh, specifically excites you the most about the offense after going through camp and preseason practice? What excites you the most about the offense this year? I mean, you know how explosive we are. Um, we can be a lot explosive and you know, put our minds to it. And, and we got the we got the talent, we got the skill, we got the quarterback, you know, so just we got all aspects of the game on the offense, I believe like just being explosive, we can show that how explosive he is running and throwing. I believe like he how, like how, how many guys would you say have the potential for lack of a better word, take it to the house every time how many guys? How many different guys on that offense have that capability? I mean we have a lot of guys coming back from last year. As you can see, last year we had a lot of guys that was able to do it. So, I mean, we won the national championship with a lot of guys being exposed. So, I, I believe every guy that we have on our team can do that, do that, play the role as long as we buy into the plan and go out there and execute. So. Any more touchdown passes coming in the future? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. What lessons have you learned from Zeus and James Cook last year in terms of what it takes to win to apply this year? Just to dial into the game plan, really, you know, they really focus, taught me how to focus on and, and not just the plays and stuff like that, but not when I'm only on the field, when I'm off the field, just be dialed in and locked in, walk through, take them serious and stuff like that. Um, I mean, when I'm freshman, you know, you, you, you're talking on the sideline, you're not really getting in as much, so you're really doing a lot of talking, playing with you, um, other people that came in your class and stuff like that, so just me being real, you know, dialed in and focus on what needs to be done and stuff like that. I feel like they taught me a lot. And, yeah.
Earlier in camp, Dale McGee contributed to DeAndre Swift in some ways. When you hear that comparison, a guy who's pretty good in the NFL right now, how does that sort of make you feel? Um, I believe, like I said, I've been ready for this moment my whole life. Um, that is a great comparison. Uh, I believe, like me and him, have similar game plan skills, stuff like that. So me just hearing that just you know, made me humble, more, even more humble, because like, like you say, he's doing well in the league, and that's a goal for my, for me. So for him to be like, for me to be compared to him, it just, you know, I thank God for that, because like, without him, there's nothing, there's nothing. Coach Landon, coming back week one, is a guy who knows this team pretty well. Does that add something extra to the game, or is it just business as usual? Coach Landon coming back knows the team pretty well. Is that something you look forward to going into the game, or is it just business as usual? Yeah, business as usual. You know, you know, um, Dan, Dan was a good coach here. He won the national championship with him, so he definitely knows what he's doing. It's just business as usual. That's all. Nothing to do. Is it hard for you? Was it hard for you to be patient, knowing that you've got obviously NFL guys ahead of you, and knowing that your time's eventually going to come, but you know, with the transfer pool and everything out there, that greener pastures could be there. How hard was it for you to be patient? Sort of it wasn't hard at all. Um, I knew what I came to Georgia for. Um, I knew what my role was when I first got here. I knew what it was going to take for me to be in this position I'm at now. Like I said, I just thank God for His time and His time is never wrong. So I give Him all the praise. Where is, for two more questions. Where's, where's that mindset come from? You know, obviously, two older brothers who played college football and both were in the NFL. Where's that sort of mindset? That, hey, my time's going to come and I can be patient. My time like, doesn't seem like a lot of Really, my father. I say, well, my parents, my mother too. Because without them, and them teaching me about God and, and uh, having this patience and stuff like that. But my dad really, he, he, he been through it, all this and stuff like that. He, you know, really listening to them, dialing to his word. Like, most, most people don't grow up without, the father, without fathers, so I was blessed to have him in my life. So him being able to talk to being that, that bug in my ear, you know, it's just, just having him in my life really taught me that and stuff like that and just really taking his word, that's all.